Janky AF presents It's Cruisin' for Cars with Corn. Welcome to another edition of Cruising for Cars with Corn, brought to you by Janky AF, a subsidiary of Janky Painting and Toilet Company, LLC. I'm going to uh, do some random browsing tonight. I saw a couple of things recently that I really liked. I saw this uh, V6 Camaro. I think we might have looked at that earlier. I can't remember where it was that was the problem. Let's go to a Western Massachusetts for a second. Say hello to Robert and Cicely, two great friends of ours. Oh, we're just typing Western Massachusetts without typing Craigslist. And this, I'm using the Ecosia browser, which supposedly, uh, a browser, a search engine rather, which supposedly, um, Too good at spelling right now. There we go, Western Mass. All right. Oh, well, Kojo is saying uh, plants, trees, just for you searching for stuff from the ad revenue. So that's kind of cool. Oh boy, I see this eclipse right here. But that's a little too rich for our blood. Go down a little to the bottom and see what we can find. See if we can find some value. I saw this excellent condition bus seats. This would be sweet. Just get a set of these, put them in your car. Can't be that bad, right? They're probably a little stiff, but how much bolstering they'd do. Back seat maybe. Pretty cool though. Cheap seat. Alright, now we got the ads, the ads, the ads, the ads, the ads. Should be a crime to do this. You know, I say Craigslist is the best version of their capitalism there is, but you gotta say the incessant advertising still made it into the system somehow. Alright, Honda Sonata, here's the Volvo Wagon. You know, these are so cool, but I feel like just every single one has got so many issues. It runs and drives for 500 bucks, that's crazy with title, we'll donate if no one wants. Huh. Undercarriage looks rusty. Brakes feel squishy, but work. Heater fan rumbles. Driver side tires have a slow leak. Huh. 291,000 miles. Well, that's a project. That's good for like an engine swap or something. Apparently these go forever, but starting out at 300,000 gas powered car. Nice interior. I saw this 2003 Dodge Stratus RT, 249,000 miles. It's a manual, which is pretty cool. Probably pretty fun to drive. I don't know anything about these 2003 Stratus RT. Need some body work. Yeah, these weren't a terrible looking car, I have to say. If they were rear wheel drive, that'd be really cool. Let's see what kind of engine these things had in them. the famous Will Ferrell bit. I kind of would like to do a Dodge Stratus just so I could ode to that bit. Let's see. First generation sex is a second gen Stratus engines. Alright, 2.4 i4. That's weird. Oh yeah, the, the Avenger came back for a short while. Look at that, just like a mini uh, Intrepid. Looks like an Intrepid coupe. Okay, RT. RT engines built from March 2004 and later. Oh, so 215. They'll use the Neon SRT4, that's kind of cool. So let's basically slap a turbo on it. 215 horsepower. Went up to 225 later. You know, I don't know what this thing weighs, but it's probably not super light. Not terrible, but you know, it would need a lot of work. High mileage. Here's a matrix. I like matrices, but we're not going to look at that right now. Not 
but uh, not weird enough, unfortunately. Matrix and the Vibe, though, famously, same car. Those have uh, really great track records. I know a couple people have them over 200,000 miles. This thing was pretty intriguing. Great shape, lots of new parts, needs a fuel pump. Everything worked great except for the fuel pump. No, oh, that's poetic. 235,000. Boy, that is pretty sweet. For a thousand bucks, pick yourself up 4x4 four four and it's bright orange, it's box and sirens. Pretty great. That's pretty great. Hmm. 235. Cord parts car and Jeeps. These, I just feel like these. Oh, here's one. This was a great one. Look at this thing. This looks pretty clean. It's like my 1998 Ford Explorer Sport used for work during layoff. Runs good, lots of power. New front brake lines, battery, and alternator last year. All good. Tires will. Tires still good. Crack and windshield. All options. So you gotta get a new windshield. Great truck for new driver, four wheeling, etc. Twelve hundred dollars as is. Now what are we looking at for Ford Explorer windshield? It sounds like it had some work done to it. I mean windshield two hundred somewhere between a hundred dollars and two hundred and fifty five dollars. So say you're in it for three hundred bucks, worst case scenario. So you're up to 15 right off the bat. But other than that, you're always going to need some, but say you put another thousand into it and then you're at 2,500 for like, you know, nine, less than 100,000 miles. Clean it out. I think these Explorer 2 doors from this era are awesome. I think they're underrated. I don't know what their, you know, capabilities are. Um, 4 liter, that's probably the same uh, 4 liter. Unless it's a V8, it's probably a V6. Same 4 liter V6 in the Aerostar, could be. They're really cool. They're just so basic. I like the blue interior a lot. The, the, the color scheme is great, blue on blue. A um, little bit of rust in the rocker there. See down there, but, you know, could use a little bit of a cleaning. But, I don't know, the pick, you know, this is... I wish people would just do front, side, side, back at least so we can get all the shots and profile of each side we can see the whole car it's a little disappointing I want to see the grill you know I want to see that uh, in it see it in all its uh, glory but it looks pretty clean I mean this I really think these are an underrated car two door four by fours you know the, the four by four market's going crazy with the Wagoneers and the anything you know it's like an old classic that is um, one of those big Azuzus, the Troopers, those are awesome. I get it, the Monteros, they're all really cool in some of these Japanese imports now. But, you know, this thing is just 10 years away from being in that territory. And you're, you know, it's never going to be as rare or special or whatever. But it's just, you know, a fun little truck that you can have. And the, I think the two-doors are really cool. Some of those two-door RAV4s, there's a lot of cool two-door SUVs in this time period. Um, and, you know... It's just a great ride, you know, like maybe it's not as legendary as the Wrangler or something like that, but it's so much cheaper and probably going to be, you know, as reliable, if not more so. I think these, if this is a 4 liter V6, those are pretty reliable motors, from what I understand. So, I think that's a pretty good, pretty good buy right there, actually. One dealership is monopolized, uh, Western Mass, Craigslist. I always love these little echoes. So funny looking. Well, here's another Gallant. Well, didn't care. I've always changed oil, recent exhaust. So you remember that last Gallant we looked at was something like 600 bucks. This one's 1500 Now, this is another one. It's over $1,000. Real. Here we go. Always change oil, recent exhaust, $1,000, no rest. But then it says fifteen hundred. So do they lower the price? What's going on? One hundred sixty-four thousand. But we looked at other Galant with that was running the three bungee cord setup, the one on the trunk and two on the hood. Um, you know, to get that thing back to even to this condition is probably much more than the difference between the two cars. But I mean, that was a, like make a race car. Look at these front ends. I think they're so. 
I think this line is so elegant. It's almost kind of like what the modern day Honda Accords look now with this kind of like squared off headlight. Very ahead of its time and this big sweeping inlet in there. It's very simple, it's very understated. And you know, your hood lines come in right when the headlights come, so you got all this nice little like, you know, invisible lines, negative space, symmetry. It's very, it's a very, uh, I actually don't mind it in this light blue, but I think like a, these cars cry out for like a bright color for me, like a red, because they're so understated. Simple designs look better in bright colors, I often think. Nice interior, I like these lines too, it's sort of, I don't know what kind of motor this has in it. Some four banger, probably decent and reliable, right? Huh, look at that pattern on the tread. Yeah, cool, Gallant, cool car. Maybe a thousand for a thousand, that ain't a bad buy. Now I saw this earlier. Look at this. Ooh, ah. Rare Honda Civic hatchback. Five owner. One five speed one owner vehicle. Factory air conditioning. It's a manual. Now I actually thought that the VX was such a weird coat. Oh boy. It's in rough shape, but honestly, you know, if there's not really too much going on beyond this rust here. Paint the window seals. Paint the car. I do love this color, but it's not gonna you know, cut it. It's gonna even if it keep the teal theme, it's gonna need a well, hopefully it needs quite a bit, but it's, it looks like it's all, you know, bodywork. It really depends on how rusty it is underneath there and how bad it is. Um But these cars, the shape of them, cool seats, I love the the one stock headrest. I think they're so cool. Crank windows, I love the door inserts that match the seats kinda. It's a little worn out, but you know what? You could probably try to, you know, just do this middle section. I was looking up some fabric paints meant for leather, but I don't see why it wouldn't work on this. I think the paint would probably penetrate better. I love teal. I love the oh, how much teal it was in the 90s. So I looked up these this VX model trim line, and um, it was a factory weight saving trim line that Honda did. I don't know what they did to make it lighter. Um, but, you know, because cause fuel efficiency was a, was a hot commodity at this period. 92, but you're still kind of coming off of the um, you know, manufacturers has gotten in the habit of building really efficient cars because of the gas shortage. In the 80s. Japanese invasion, much like the uh, British invasion in rock and roll, Japanese invasion in the uh, you know, 80s was a big deal. A lot of legendary cars came out of that continue to. Honda Civic, the legend. I had a Honda Civic, I crashed it. It was a four door, 2003, I believe. Amazing car. Great car. I love that car. Four door. I've always loved the hatchbacks. I always wanted a Civic hatchback. Let's see. This must be the fifth generation we're talking about. G91. Oh, they got entire articles just dedicated to each generation. That's how big the Honda Civic is. Let's see. Hatchback. BX, here you go. Look at this. During the late 1980s and the early 1990s, as a result of high gasoline prices and the consumer demand for relief, automobile companies, particularly Toyota and Honda, competed to see who could field the most fuel efficient production automobile. It's kind of a cool thing if you think about it. The Civic VX was Honda's entry for 1992. Fitted with the same manual transmission as the US DM CX, the VX was identical identical to the base model CX, except that it gained improved fuel efficiency from various weight reduction methods such as reduced trim and molding. There you go. That's how you do it. First thing you do in a race car, strip out all the interior. VX model specific lightweight 13 inch aluminum alloy wheels. That's pretty cool. 165 70 13 tires. I think that's the exact size that fits a Fiat X19. That's crazy. Of 
Let's see if I'm going to tell you anywhere with the tire sizes for a <laughs> Fiat X09. You can't find that information easily. Oh, 165, 70, 13. 165, 70, 13. That's crazy. That's so funny. They're hard to get to. Now, a 92 horsepower VTEC, a VTEC E engine. These features on the VX yielded 48.55 mileage. Well, I guess it's revised, but so cool so that's really kind of awesome that a you know factory race car basically except instead of for speeds for mileage but that's cool that's a that's a one owner vehicle so someone's managed to maintain it from new until this state which is pretty funny but they still have it that might even be worth a phone call just to see what's going on because that would be like a really really legendary car to have and that teal man, we could do something really cool with that. There's another uh, uh, Ranger I saw. I've been into Rangers a lot lately. I do have always loved the Rangers. Let's see, is this a Super Cab two wheel drive? So, right there, a lot of people are out. But you know what? Runs and drives good just for hauling shit around and stuff. And it's still kind of fun. Runs and drives good, but does have an exhaust leak, wide pipe, not in pass inspection. Yeah, it's got some shit wrong with it. Low mileage, though, pretty reason. You know, 126. I like the black and white paint scheme. It's so funny. It's like every other panel. Um, you can almost just leave it like that. It's so funny. <laughs> sort of the facelifted Ranger there. Legendary trucks. What else we got here? Oh, I saw this. This is beautiful Chrysler Concorde. Oh my goodness. This is $1,800. I wouldn't even touch this. I would keep it exactly how it is. Those wheels. A little uh, rear thing in the back on camera. I'll tell you, man. Chrysler, that, that, that rear end still is like so... That line is so elegant and simple. And you can kind of see the old New Yorkers in there, you know, from the, even though it was way boxier, I like that there's still, you know, continuation. Look at this line. Look at this line of the, you know, I was talking about door panel gaps. Like, look at this line from this window here all the way down. It's almost a perfect, barely, maybe there's a little, but it's just this beautiful line all the way down. It swoops around the wheel well. That's incredible. I love the curviness of the 90s, I really do. Um, these big honk and tail lights, but it's, but it's so simple, you know. I think this is maybe the, the pinnacle of um, sort of Chrysler's design. They had so many, like, I think the Crossfire is a beautiful car. It's a little later than this, but, you know, the Prowler was really like sort of a crazy, awesome time at Chrysler. Tail lights just sunk in there. Almost got a little bit of Camaro in there, doesn't it, even though it's Chrysler. Boy, just a look at that. Hmm. That long sweeping. Yeah. Nice interior, actually. I have to say, for the American companies, Chrysler was probably making the best interiors at this time. Definitely better than GM, probably better than Ford, too. It's supple. That color is beautiful, that dark blue. And this license plate is kind of a bummer. <laughs> uh, because that's beautiful. The sort of like implied dual headlights of that little extra ridge there. It is very Chevy Camaro. I never noticed this. Is back and front look a lot like the Camaro, which is funny. But to make a sedan out of it, even the way the mirrors almost like sort of hang on the body. Just a beautiful car. Bed Cruise is real nice. 2004, 170,000 miles, so I don't know how those, how reliable those engines are, high mileage. There's a Brougham, or I don't know how to say that, but I don't know. These old Cadillacs, and I love them, but it's like, you know, for the same price, I would almost rather get like a 
Town Car or something like that. That is pretty sweet. Look at that. Speaking of simple. Now this you could do an amazing paint scheme on. That is pretty nice. I gotta say, that's pretty nice. White interior is very nice. Oof, I'm getting talked into it now. That the, I thought it was gonna be like a, sort of a red carpet interior or whatever. I love red too. I love red seats, but sometimes red interiors and the whole thing's decked out. It's a little much for me. Crazy coming from corn, I know, but the we, the blue with the white is very, and the wood is a what wood blue and white is a very strange, but I actually love it. It looks good and white, but it's also just kind of crying out to be painted. I love those hubcaps. Some of the hubcaps from this era were nicer than the actual wheels that were on the vehicles, which is funny. Let's get that front shot one more time. Ugh. All these like beautiful little creases, this big hood panel here. Boy, that is very, very nice. Low miles, 107. You know, this is before the North Star V8, so it's probably a lot more reliable than even Cadillacs from 10 years at 15 years after it. Power everything, all original OEM radio. I guess you probably want to worry about electric electronics in this. Does need a new tailpipe. Not loud though. Clean undercarriage starts every time and never has left me stranded. Comes with studded snow tires driving this thing in the snow. I have a 1900 firm, so you're not getting any leeway there. I don't know. That's that's pretty incredible. I gotta say, that's pretty. Look at the size of that rear end. I always worry about the gas, the shocks, the air shocks in these. Any car with air shocks kind of creeps me out, but boy, that's something. This that's a dealership, but this Saab, I gotta say, for whatever reason, this era, that's just like the perfect Saab for me. Right in the sweet spot of the styling, where it kind of just worked. All the I love all these just bridges. I love the that they always do tri-spoke wheels on Saabs too, because it's almost like a Pontiac move, which is funny, because they're totally on the opposite end of like the you know, just cultural, oeuvre, as you as it were. I don't know if this is a stick shift. It's like an automatic, but I'm not buying it anyway, so. The terrazas are hilarious. This is Zara's real nice. I love these Zara's. I don't think I like them as much as the XJ. Was it the XJ 350s? XG350. I think these came a little bit before, and I almost like them a little bit more. Boy, that is really, really nice. I think that's a fine looking car. It almost looks like those uh, big Toyota sedans in Japan. Century, I think they're called. Maybe went through some slight changes. I like that original rear end. Yeah, look at that. The license plate down low, I think is nicer. But the um these Hyundai Azeras came in a purple. That was really nice. It's like this, kind of a wine, but I, I almost remember it being a little bit more maybe this, this like deep cranberry. It's got some purple in it too. Boy, that is Zara. Yeah, that's a cool. I look for some reason the, the darker color. This is very nice though in the champagne. But uh, yeah, it's a very handsome car. That big haunch in the back, kind of aggressive. It's kind of like a, a beautiful, beautiful interior. I mean, that is that's top notch. I think I like them in darker colors, like a black or a, that dark purple. 1900 bucks. I mean, very nice. Great. That's like, you know, for 2000 bucks, 120,000 miles. That's a very, very nice car. Very luxurious and probably more reliable than your Mercedes or Audis or, you know, BMWs are going to be. Quite honestly. Even back in 2006, Hyundai and Kia were starting to ramp up their luxury game, which is pretty, you know, outstanding right now, I'd say. I guess I have to show this. I don't know if it's Reagan and Gordon. This is a whole. I appreciate this write up. 
I, I do. These write-ups are great. This is the type of Craigslist write-up I would write. Your Calvin and Hobbs is a historical thing, but I don't know if it's the, actually the best way to sell a car. Because you know, you're kind of like, almost sounds like you're joking about it. Like, like if you loved it that much, you'd probably, you know, want to keep it and keep it running. But I, I didn't know they even made these in a sedan, which is pretty crazy. I know the wagons are pretty famous. Two thousand bucks though for you know pretty sought after classic or it seems like they're sought after. Definitely have a cult following for sure. These auroras. I read some some article somewhere about how these auroras or maybe just on a message board or something. These auroras were like just Oldsmobile. This GM went like all out making these things. Two hundred fifty horsepower. That's pretty great. Front subframe starting to rust. Mm. But, I mean, you know, this styling, too, is very, very, like, at the time, very futuristic. And that back, big sweeping light bar again. Light bars are hot now. And the back one. It's almost like, you don't, yeah, it's almost not cartoonish enough in its proportions, quite honestly. Um, but just some of the angles on this car. Some of, like, the way the, the glass swoops around in this big, it's like a Jaguar in there. And big haunch here. It's like a fairly, fairly nice place to be in here. Um, yeah, really, really cool flagship sedan from Oldsmobile. You know, nothing like it else on the GM lineup at that time. Ninety-five. Yeah, you know the Mila Sabre looks. You know, is so much more old school than this. This is very, very futuristic. I mean, I love the Sabre, but this is like a whole. Uh, you know, really going for it. Now let's see if we can look up one more. Find something special to end on. There was a Prius here with 400,000 miles. Looks like it was an old taxi with the black and white, or uh, black and yellow livery. That was really cool. It'd be like kind of a fun, ridiculous thing. Two door Cherokee. I've decided to officially sell my Jeep. Six years ago, I had 60000 So, second engine. I don't know, it looks pretty darn clean to me. The two doors, pretty great. Again, two door SUVs. But you know, this compared to uh, that Explorer, that's a five speed. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool car. Can't lie. The engine's still good. 2500 is a pretty good price for that. Say, so, oh, here we go. We'll end with this. 92 Mustang, four-cylinder. I love slow sports cars. It's an automatic, but hey. My husband's selling his 92 Ford Mustang, four-cylinder convertible automatic car. It's only 140,000 mile. Car runs and drives. Clean title. Second owner and had it on the road last summer, but took it off. Car is original. Asking 2500 message. Message interesting. Oh. Well, I'm no mechanic, but that angle of the wheel does not look quite right to me. And black wheels. I love these interiors, but really, one of those things where it really has to be clean to really, like, sort of shine. Because it's so simple. Same wheel as a, uh, oh, it's just flat, I guess. Same wheel as the Aerostar, famously, in a Mustang, and the, I believe the Mustang of this year had a worse coefficient of drag than the Aerostar, which is a claim to fame. So, that's it for uh, this episode of Cruising for Cars with Corn. Uh, thanks so much for tagging along, and uh, Cruising for Cars uh, with Corn brought to you, as always, by Janky AF, uh, Janky Automobile Fabricación. So uh, we'll see you next time. Janky do thank you.